Hey guys, uh, this is Brian from Better Chess Training, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing a very nice game played by Fabiano Caruana, who of course challenged Magnus Carlsen for the World Championship, and I believe is still currently uh, ranked number two. And uh, he's playing in a nice uh, Roy Lopez, so uh, with the white pieces. So check it out. Hey guys, I was doing a little. Uh, research on this uh, line in the Roy Lopez and I came across this very nice game by uh, American uh, Grandmaster Fabiano Caruana whom you all should know challenged Magnus Carlsen last year to the World Championship so let's go through this game this is a game from uh, 2014 against Michael Ruiz a uh, another Grandmaster rated about uh, 2579 uh, in this game okay so it starts out with e4 uh, Caruana is the white are the white pieces e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 and bishop to b5 we have the uh, Rui Lopez and I'm not going to go too much into the theory there's a ton of uh, different lines that can happen from here but uh, a6 is the uh, most popular uh, bishop to a4 knight to f6 and then white castles and uh, many you many of you may know this already but uh, um, black cannot take this pawn uh, because uh, rook to e1 uh, will be very uncomfortable and uh, white will be able to win this pawn back fairly quickly so uh, instead bishop to e7 and now rook to e1 protecting the pawn b5, bishop to b3, and d6. Now, white plays c3 here, and two reasons for this. One is to give the bishop a place to escape in case uh, black attacks it would say knight to a5, and also to prepare uh, d4 to help fight for the center. Okay, black castles, and White plays h3, very common line, preventing this uh, knight from hopping here or this bishop from coming here as well. Okay, the knight comes back, and this is often a uh, repositioning of the knight. It can come here to d7 and also makes way for the c5 pawn to uh, take some space on the queen side. Uh, this is called the Brayer system, and it's one of the more uh, well-regarded defensive systems for black in these, this uh, Roy Lopez. Okay, d4 comes fighting for the center, and then here's that knight to d7. Okay, knight to b2, knight b to d2 is played, and here's another common maneuver, bishop to b7, and then uh, bishop to c2. Uh, defending this and the reason why we need this uh, defender on here is that after rook to e8 this knight is going to make its way over to g3 okay bishop moves back to f8 and here the knight comes to g3 uh, g6 is played another uh, common move and this again so just a quick aside, in this opening you can see there's a lot of kind of uh, subtle maneuvering. Some other openings are more direct in terms of, okay, I'm going to attack, you're going to defend, I'm going to attack, you're going to defend. So uh, because the the pawn structures for both sides are fairly intact, uh, because there's many pieces on the board, it can the play can be very complex, and this maneuvering happens, uh, kind of preventing your opponent's plan. So uh, we'll see more of that throughout this game. Okay, g6, preventing this knight from coming to h5 or f5. Okay, a4. So, white, I think what um, you could see, white's pieces are kind of massing here, uh, pointing at the center and towards the king side. So, uh, I think white takes a couple moves to clarify the queen side. Of course, taking on a4 would be uh, poor because now... Uh, this rook uh, can start to attack this weak pawn on a6. So instead, uh, let's go back, e4, oh. e4, instead knight to b6 is played. Now actually threatening to take this pawn, 
And so white pushes on with a5, starting to lock up these queenside pawns. So the queenside is sort of um, black's main counterplay here. And so what white is trying to do is just lock these pawns up, lock over the situation so he can turn his attention towards the center and towards the king side. Okay, the knight goes back to d7, and then b4 now locking up the a and b pawns and adding another uh, defender to c5. This uh, black would like to play c5 at some point, but uh, will find it hard to do. Okay. Bishop to g7 is played. And here, uh, I think uh, this move was, was criticized and because, because it's felt that this, this bishop is needed here on this diagonal because um, even though I, I just said that b4 helps to prevent this, c5 may, be, may, be, may have been uh, one of white's chances for um, developing some counterplay at some point. Okay? Let's go back. Uh, after bishop to g7, although this is, again, this is not a uh, horrible... Um, you know, horrible move. But here, the problem with it is that it now allows d5. So basically, the thought process here is the bishop goes to g7, looking to get some action here, so let's lock that up. Okay? And if we look at the pawn structure, we can see a couple things. Obviously, the, the queen side is locked up, the center is locked up, and we have these two backward pawns, uh, the, both the c pawns for black and for white. And typically what you want to do with these backward pawns, if you're the opposing side, is you want to find some way to attack it or restrain it, or occupy the, the square that it can advance to. Or if you are the defending side, the one who has the backward pawn, eventually you want to prepare to advance it. So that would be the general, very general uh, strategic ideas behind these backward pawns. Um, so let's see what happens. Queen to b8. And I think this is to help support uh, what, what black is playing. Again, black is playing for this c6 break. Uh, white eventually might want to play for c4 and bishop to b3. Again, this move is both uh, supporting an eventual c4 and also um, preparing in case black plays c6. Okay. Now, what happens next is this knight goes to f8. And what this is signaling is that c6 is coming because we want to dislodge this pawn and what that would do is perhaps give this e6 square for the knight. So that's part of the idea of this knight to f8. Okay, because of that rook to a2 comes and because this file may be opening soon, this rook to a2 is sort of preparing to swing over to d2 at some point. Okay, so c6 comes. Now, uh, this actually ends up being somewhat of a strategic mistake, uh, at least in terms of the timing. Okay, and, and we'll see what happens in the game. Instead, uh, the analysis shows with some computer help here that h6 uh, is the move. Now, this, this move seems sort of uh, uh, passive, but what it does is it prevents um, this knight from coming to, to g5. And this is important, as we'll see a little later, uh, but we can, even though in hindsight it's easy to see, as we'll see in the game, uh, here we can see it because we, we can see that we're going to be opening up the a2 to g8 diagonal here if we were to play, if we were black playing c6, so f7 becomes very weak, and this knight to g5 is a real threat. Okay, so playing this h6 first, taking a move to do that, and then playing c6 is uh, what we want to do. Now, I thought, too, well, why does black have to play c6? And I think it's kind of critical at some point, because otherwise white, I think, can eventually squeeze uh, black, because white's pieces are very passive. We just take a look here. Uh, this bishop is stuck behind, you know, blocked off by these pawns. This bishop is blocked off by his own pawn, which is stuck in the center here. And these rooks aren't doing anything, or this queen, 
and these knights have no squares. So playing c6 eventually is definitely something we want to do, or maybe f5, although f5 is very dangerous here with this bishop on b3, which is probably why white put the bishop on b3. So let's see what happens. Okay, going back here, c6 is played, and of course white wants to take that now, opening this diagonal. Okay, takes back with the bishop, and now uh, we're going to attack this pawn. Okay, it's attacked twice, it's only defended once, so black brings this rook over to defend. Okay, and white plays rook to e3, and could be a lot of ideas for this. This bishop could be coming out to g5 to try to pin this knight, and also white might envision a rook to e2 and then rook to d2 tripling up here. Okay, uh, rook to d7, and again, I think this is maybe planning something like uh, queen to c7 and then rook uh, a to d8 defending this pawn. So you can see this now is the backward pawn, and it's becoming a, a target of attack, but we cannot forget here that f7 is also weak, and now I think you're starting to see, hopefully, the why h6 would have been very helpful a little earlier in the game. Knight to g5, okay, so now we're targeting this, and then queen to c7, protecting f7. So this trade of bishop and knight for rook and pawn, uh, by typical standards, is about even, but we'll see here that it's the removal of the defenses of the black d6 pawn, which is kind of the strategic value of uh, taking on f7. So let's take a look here. Uh, bishop to e3, and this makes it much more active. Can hop on to here for, to b6, for example, attacking this queen. Now h6 is played, provoking this knight, and now we can take here. Okay, the rook takes back on f7, and... Here's something, a uh, good thing to remember. After, uh, we don't have to take this right away because it is pinned. So we go ahead and take this pawn. So in terms of um, material, white is still down, but of course he's going to be recovering his material very quickly at some point by taking this rook. Okay, bishop comes back to f8. And now uh, white throws in this bishop to b6. Okay, the queen goes here to b7. And here white throws in a very nice move, f4. And if you want, you can pause this video and see why it's not very good for black to take on f4. Well, let's take a look at that line. If e takes f4, then White presses on with e5. And then, say for example, f takes g3, then we have e takes f6, and bishop takes f6, and then rook takes f6, because remember, this rook is still pinned. Then here you can see, even though material is actually um, even, that uh, black's in a lot of trouble, because he's going to be at least losing the exchange here, uh, as well as potential for like bishop to d5, and, uh, uh, you know, this bishop can get into trouble, this pawn is weak, this pawn is weak, so uh, white is winning big time here. Okay, so let's go back. So he can't take on f4. Instead, he retreats his knight to d7, so now that does, he can take on f4 now because uh, we avoid that variation that I just showed you. But... White uh, plans on pushing on anyway, which was really his intention after playing f4. Okay, this knight takes, trying to trade off some of these attacking pieces, and um, White could have taken with the rook as well, but it's perfectly fine here, and now he's got a passed b pawn. Okay, king goes to h7, trying to get out of the pin. And now, instead of taking this rook, we are going to skewer this queen and rook over here. Queen moves, and then the bishop takes on a8, queen takes back, and now this rook comes over to f1, helping to uh, support this pawn here on f5. Black takes, and then white takes with the rook. This queen comes over. Uh, trying to um, get a little more active. 
Okay, rook takes, bishop takes, and now this knight now takes the spot on f5. So we can see that um, this opening here of the f file, bring, pushing this pawn and trading this g pawn, gives white this very nice square. Okay, and with that, actually, black resigned. And I think we can see uh, there are many threats here. This queen can come in here. Uh, Targeting this square, this queen can come over here as well, and threaten over here, and just too many threats. Of course, a player of uh, Caruana's caliber uh, would be able to capitalize on this, so Ruiz uh, perhaps wisely resigned. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I thought that was a great game and, and wanted to share it with you. Uh, if you enjoy uh, Master Games, uh, I've got a nice link to one over here. And if you uh, want to support this channel, uh, you can become a patron by checking out my patron page. I have the link down below. Uh, I want to thank uh, those of you who already support me. I really appreciate it. Patronage comes with some benefits, so you can check those out. And uh, otherwise, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you soon.